Last week, on opposite sides of the world, on the same day, two companies launched rockets from the ocean, from the sea, from a boat on the sea. Does this mean that launching from the sea is making a return? I'm going to talk about that and what we should expect for future launches, future evolutions of Spaceport, possibly launching from the ocean. Or as someone recently corrected in a meeting, launching from a boat in the ocean. I'm Lara Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. We have been looking at launch for years now, specifically launch rates and launch problems. And sea launch is a potential solution to a problem. When you think about all the rockets that are projected to launch, not even all the ones launching this year, especially by SpaceX, but all the ones that are projected to launch in the coming years, coming decades. When you think about that kind of congestion, and you think about the fact that we are already experiencing congestion here in the United States, especially at Cape Canaveral, well then it makes sense, doesn't it, to start thinking about where can we launch that's not interfering with airspace? Where can we launch that is not gonna put the public at risk? And one company, the Spaceport Company, is testing the waters with Sea Launch. They announced today that Thursday last week, August 29th, they did a test launch with a company called Evolution Space with a scaled down version of their rocket. This was not a launch to space. This was low altitude. It got up to 55,500 feet, which translates to 17 kilometers. So this wasn't actually nowhere near space, but it was a successful test of the ability to launch not just this rocket on a scaled down version of this rocket, but also to test the platform, the launch platform, and the ground station equipment, and everything that had to work with this launch. This took place in the Gulf of Mexico, about 30 miles south of Mississippi, on a vessel that was purchased earlier this year in February called Once in a Lifetime. It's a 180-foot former U.S. Navy vessel, and this vessel purchase was funded mostly by an award that was given to the Spaceport Company $2.5 million by the Defense Innovation Unit. That's a segment of the Department of Defense. This launch that happened last week, it is a demonstration mission of a contract that they won the Naval Response Space Delivery, NRSD-1 mission. This was a partnership between the Evolution Company, which is building a larger scale rocket to actually go to space, as well as the Spaceport Company, which was testing all of the equipment that it needs to do launches from the sea including end-to-end -end offshore hypersonic test range services, vehicle preparation at sea, range surveillance and clearing, and tracking and telemetry support. The Spaceport Company was founded back in 2022, so it is a new startup. It was founded to build infrastructure to solve the problem of launch site congestion. And by that, we specifically mean in Florida, mostly, because the other launch sites in the United States don't even have anywhere near the cadence of Cape Canaveral Spaceport. And when I'm talking about Cape Canaveral, I'm talking about both Kennedy Space Center as well as the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Back in 2021, I wrote a report where I looked at all of the reasons why there are launch delays here in the United States. And while weather and problems with the payload and problems with the rocket were the biggest issues, there was one particular problem that was unique to Florida, and that was launch site logistics. And this report was written three years ago. This was a concern that was literally delaying these launches, trying to juggle all the different companies, all the different rockets that want to launch from Cape Canaveral was literally delaying these launches. And now fast forward three years where SpaceX is launching every few days and has plans to launch significantly in the coming years with both Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, as well as Starship, you can imagine how busy Florida is going to become. What is a potential solution? Well, launching from sea. And it, it was about the 2020 timeframe when my colleague Tom Murata, who founded the Spaceport Company, was talking to me about this very issue of launch site congestion. And what better way to alleviate the concerns of how do you work the range? How do you clear the airspace? You know, the FAA, especially on the aviation side, is very concerned about planes being rerouted. On the naval side, it's less of a problem, but boats being rerouted, especially from Port Canaveral. And then you've always got the concern from the uninvolved public, especially when you're talking about a rocket like Starship, which is currently undergoing the EIS evaluations for whether or not it can launch from Cape Canaveral and how frequently. So when you take all of that into consideration, and of course, Florida isn't the only launch site that might benefit from sea launch, but when you take all of those characteristics just in Florida, you can see how it might be beneficial for the United States in general and the space community in particular to launch from the ocean.
By the way, if anyone wants to contract with my company, Astrolytical, to update that report on launch delays or launch site congestion, I'd be very curious what the numbers are now because I'm sure that problem has only grown. This launch on August 29th was not the first launch from the Spaceport Company and Evolution Space. They had actually partnered about a year and a half ago where they launched four sounding rockets from that platform. That was a proof of concept test and there's not a ton of information about it other than the fact that it was successful and they were able to learn a lot. Coincidentally, on the same day, just hours earlier, on the other side of the planet, there was a launch by Galactic Energy from the sea. That's a Chinese company. They had their third sea launch, and this one actually went to space. It brought six satellites to orbit, various customers, all Earth observation related somehow or another. Sea launch is nothing new to China. In fact, China has been launching rockets from the sea, including the Long March 11, the Jailong, so sorry if I said that wrong, Galactic One and Sirius. Sirius One is the rocket that just launched from Galactic Energy. China has been seen as picking up the pace, both in terms of space in general, but also in terms of launch. And Sea Launch is nothing new to the space community either. That very name, Sea Launch, Sea Launch LLC, was a company. It was a multinational company, Norway, Russia, Ukraine, and the United States. And it launched from 1999 to 2014. It assembled and launched 32 rockets successfully with three failures and one partial failure. It was managed by Boeing as well as other stakeholders. And it was not without its difficulties. So it actually went through chapter 11 bankruptcy back in 2009, restructured, kept on going. And what really stopped it was when Russia invaded Ukraine back in 2014. That's when things went south and the company just dissolved. That in itself could probably be a whole other video as to the pros and cons of Sea Launch the company. But when you're talking about Sea Launch the concept, I think that's a separate topic. And there are definite advantages and, and some disadvantages to launching from the sea. Of course, it's more remote, which is an advantage and a disadvantage both. You've got weather concerns for sure. That's probably the number one disadvantage. We've already seen from SpaceX landings that weather is a reason why they call off launch, let alone landings. And in fact, SpaceX explored the concept of launching from the sea. They bought two oil rigs to renovate, and then they sold those oil rigs. They decided not to go in that direction at this time. Whether or not they revisit that in the future, I don't know. It requires an even more specialized team to launch from the sea than to launch from a spaceport on the ground. It might be a more corrosive environment. I'm not sure about this. Somebody, if you know, let me know because a lot of launch sites are located on the coast, right, right on the ocean. And so I don't know if there's actually more corrosion due to the salt water from being in the ocean versus just being on shore. Aside from the freedom of the range and schedule, safety is probably the number one reason why launching from the sea might be a good idea. You are not involving the uninvolved public. There should be nobody around you in a certain radius as you are launching, and you're not going to be flying over any populated sites. The size of the rocket might also be a consideration. The Spaceport Company's current vessel can launch about a thousand pounds, they're saying, up to a thousand pounds, and so that's half a ton, or about 450 kilograms. So I don't know know if they're limited because of the vessel that they have or if they're limited because of something else. So I don't know if a Starship class rocket, a super heavy lift vehicle, could launch from the sea or not. When it comes down to it, I love the direction that they're exploring. I applaud Tom and his team. I'm really excited to see where they go next. And if the next launch takes Evolution or another company's rocket to space, I think there's great potential here. But I don't think that this is probably right for every rocket in every situation. I do think it will help alleviate a lot of the concerns we're seeing with congestion, but I don't know if the business case is gonna pan out. So I think it's probably too early to tell. The Spaceport company obviously is going in the direction more of responsive launch, where the DoD wants launches to happen very quickly, you know, a 24 hour turnaround as quickly as possible. Having a clear airspace, having a clear range, having the ability to launch on your own timeline rather than waiting for other rockets around you to launch. I think this is a perfect case where sea launch could really help responsive launch be effective. Congratulations, Tom. I look forward to seeing what happens next with the Spaceport Company.